I have the pleasure of chairing this session. I'm Alaric at the University of Leeds, and we are about to hear from Laura Massetti from the Oriental University in Naples. Um, are you recording uh, yes, already? Yes, so you're I'm happy recording. with that? Okay, over to you, Laura. Thank you. Um, I also have to make a disclaimer. I also don't work actually uh, with a lot of Germanic texts. So, uh, excuse me, this will be a talk which is not really Germanic centric, so to say. It will be more Iranian centric, but Germanic will play an important role, as you will see. I also would like to thank the organizers uh, for their kind invitation, and I have to add this uh, um, giving me the opportunity to make this presentation, which was really fun to prepare. So, in his uh, renowned book, Loki, Georges Dumézil showed how Loki has several distinctive traits in common with Shepdon, the trickster of the Nardic, that is, Ossetic Eastern Iranian tradition. Dumézil's comparison mainly relied upon the analogous characteristics and achievements of his comparata, and uh, the results of the study proved that the similarities that Loki and Shepdon share uh, go beyond the standard trickster traits. Uh, um, both characters, if indeed, play an analogous role in a kid myths. And these myths uh, concern the death of a prominent, uh, usually unkillable, god or hero by an antagonist thanks to the material help of an anti-heroic character. This is the myth of the death of Baldur in Scandinavia and of Soslan Sosilusko in Ossetic. Baldur is killed by Hodor, who being blind is maneuvered by Loki, and Soslan Sosurusko is mutilated by the will of Oinon, or Balzac, or will of Balzac, or will of Malzac, Marzuk, the variants do abound. Um, parallels for the death of the unkillable hero uh, do abound as well. Guillaume Hubert has uh, recently proposed a comparison between the myth of Baldur and the death of Fergus. Dumézil himself has com had compared the Baldur's death to the defeat of Yudhishthira in the Mahabharata in a dicing match. And uh, just in case, just to add some more fuel to the fire, um, I would also uh, add the death of Achilles. Achilles is actually an, unborn, an, an invulnerable hero he has a romantic interest in Polyxena, at least according to some of our sources. He is also shot by Paris, not quite the best of the Trojans, according uh, to the Iliad, at least, uh, with the help of Apollo. But for this presentation, we will restrict the focus to other European parallels. As recently shown by Riccardo Ginevra, our organizer, the Scandinavian myth is the Germanic counterpart of the so-called myth of the wounded son. This is the name given by Stefan Jemison to the Vedic version of the myth in her 1991 iconic book. In addition, uh, Riccardo Ginevra also show, identified uh, some Greek stand-in myths, for instance, Persephone, and the Celtic counterpart of the myth, uh, Lugan Bala. This novel analysis showcased uh, several common elements such as the following one. Alpha, the hero is the son, the killed hero or wounded is the son or say a life god uh, or a life character. All Norse Balder, like old Irish Balder, are, according to his analysis, derivatives of bad to be white or shine and are also variously associated with sun and brightness. The Vedic of the Vedic myth uh, is <coughs> the victim of the Vedic myth is the sun, but quite soon this role was transferred to the sky and father god of the bright sky, Yaus, or later on on the father god Prajapati, father of the creatures. Beta, the hero loves or is abusive, we will see about this, on, on the maiden daughter of the sky or the sun. The old Norse Nana Nepstotir has been uh, recognized as as the daughter of Nebs, Nebus, reflecting Nebus, Nebus, as shown by Riccardo again. In the Irish folk tales, uh, Balor locks his daughter in a tower, which reminds us of a sleeping beauty pattern, and uh, this sleeping beauty pattern actually is associated with the incest in the story of the sleeping beauty, and the Vedic sky god assaults his own daughter. The antagonist uh, of the uh, victim is a fire god or a character associated with the element fire, Loki, 
uh, also according to Heide, but also uh, again Ginevra very recently, and uh, Agnes Varbano in the Vedic version of the myth. Finally, the instrument of death uh, of the antagonist is occasionally darkness. Hoder uh, etymologically belongs together with Greek Scotos, darkness, and Svarbano himself <coughs> faces the sun god with darkness. Now, with this contribution, I point out what we can find, that we can find, at least once as Lance, as a Risco story, which closely resemble the old Indic Scandinavian and Celtic versions of the myth. Therefore, my analysis builds on Dumézil's comparative work by integrating the various elements identified by Ginevra's study. And I will focus on the so-called Nordic tales, tales in prose and poetry. Actually, we only will focus on prose tales, um, which were first collected eventually in the 19th century, so uh, quite recently, basically yesterday, but deriving from an ancient tradition. <coughs> Uh, which was passed on orally. The Nordic tales are, uh, in fact, an oral tradition, so the old disclaimers applying to an oral collection of oral tales should apply to this tradition as well. So basically, when we are reading one version, it's like we're looking at the snapshot of one performance. So this is uh, very important for us. Also, other information, the ascetic language comes in two main variants, Iron, East, dialect and Digor, West dialect. I will focus mainly on one Digor, sorry, West dialect. And also I should tell you briefly that uh, I will show you text in the transliteration, so because the standard ascetic text appears like this. It's an Iranian language found in the, attested in the Caucasus, but it's written in Cyrillic, very chaotic. For reasons of time, I will limit my presentation to a, a more in-depth reading of one version of the story, we will read some parts of it, and I will further refer to other three versions among those I know exist. These are, I must uh, specify, many. So, <coughs> this is officially a circumscribed work in progress. Before delving into the text, uh, another remark, <coughs> um, let's introduce our main characters. Dumézils has long argued that Soslan Sosurusko is a solar character. He reaches victory at noon. He is buried in a grave with three windows east, south, and west, sun directions, and some rituals connected to his figure seem to be connected with the solstice. Shirdon, on his side, actually Shirdon from now on, exhibits some fire features. Among other things, he is associated with the fireplace through his sons, who bear names like fireplace or to blast as well as through the invention of the funeral, domestic funeral offering, which is performed in the head of the house. Let's now focus uh, on our story. So this is how it looks in transliteration. We will not uh, read it, don't be scared. In the prequel of it, we read it that while hunting once, Soslan spotted a white doe. He shot the animal, which being wounded, led it to a beautiful maiden. This maiden introduced herself as the daughter of the celestial Marzouk or Father John and asked Soslan to marry her. Soslan insulted her and left. So she complained with her father who decided to send the will of Oinon to kill Soslan. In version three of the story on this slide, the prequel simply says that the maiden complains uh, uh, with her father about Soslan. And in version four, actually, Soslan refuses an invitation of the maiden to join her while she is bathing. Now, the maiden. 